Hey everybody, hope you guys are all healthy and safe. So I have here on me the Huawei P40 Pro Plus. So if you watch my review of the Huawei P40 Pro about two months ago, you may remember that I was able to get Google apps running on that phone via a hack. And although everything worked perfectly fine on there, ultimately I didn't want to have to hack a phone just to get Google apps on there, especially when these apps are not even indispensable. There are alternatives out there. So what I did was I ended up wiping the phone and started using it again from scratch to experience the P40 Pro as it's intended to be using Huawei Mobile Services, HMS. So HMS is Huawei's alternative to Google Mobile Services, which due to the US government ban, Huawei is no longer able to use. And to be honest, HMS still has some ways to go, but it's already grown by leaps and bounds from where it was just a year ago. And my experiences overall using this phone with just HMS has been perfectly fine. All the stuff that I would get from GMS, there are workable alternatives here. So what I thought I would do with this video is I would set up the Huawei P40 Pro Plus using HMS and just introduce HMS to some of you guys out there who may not be familiar with the whole ecosystem. So first things first, I want to clear a misconception. HMS, Huawei Mobile Services, is not just an app store to replace the Google Play. HMS is actually an entire ecosystem that Huawei is building in partnership with the biggest companies around the world. It is a whole seamless ecosystem that Huawei, going forward, will use on not just its phone, but also laptop and also its wearables, earbuds, tablets, whatever else Huawei is going to put out in the future. So Huawei's app store, the Google Play alternative, is actually named the App Gallery, as you can see on this box. And I'll definitely go over this later near the end of the video. But first, I want to talk about other parts of HMS that you may not know about because I didn't really know about them too until I committed to using the P40 Pro with just HMS. So to take advantage of Huawei Mobile Services, the first thing you need to do is sign up for a Huawei ID. You may already have one if you used Huawei phones in the past, but if you have not and you buy a new Huawei device, it will be one of the first things that the device will want you to do. So Huawei ID is basically like the Google account. You will need it to sign into the app gallery to download apps. It also gives you access to Huawei Mobile Cloud. And Huawei's cloud services, it's very important going forward as Huawei builds an entire ecosystem of devices like laptops, uh, wearables, smartphones, tablets. Now, once you've synced up Huawei Cloud, whatever you do on one device will carry over seamlessly to another device. For example, when I set up this P40 Pro Plus, all I have to do is log into my Huawei ID and all the contacts and phone logs and calendar schedules on this phone immediately moved over to this phone. Huawei's mobile cloud services will also back up all my photos if I wanted to. So if I switch phones or if I lose my old phone, I won't lose my old photos. Now another major feature of Huawei Cloud is that it will help you track a device if you've lost it. Now for example, let's say I've misplaced this Huawei P40 Pro. Let's say I left it somewhere and it fell behind a couch. On the Huawei P40 Pro Plus, I just have to go to find my phone and I can locate this device. And then after that, I can play a sound to have it ring. And then I, I'll be, probably be able to find it if it's in the same room as me and it's ringing. Or if I've realized that this device has been stolen, then I can remotely wipe the device. It's just all from here. And you do not need another Huawei phone to access the find phone feature. You can access it via web browsers on any computing devices. Just go on Huawei Cloud and you'll be able to track your devices and either lock it remotely or wipe it remotely. Now let's look at other HMS services. So two services that I didn't even know Huawei offered until I started using the P40 Pro with just HMS is Huawei Video and Huawei Music. Now I've seen these apps before but I thought they were just standalone media players. I thought Huawei Music was to let you play mp3s that you download to your phone. But no, turns out there are a lot more. These are standalone streaming platforms. So Huawei Music, it's kind of like Spotify. Huawei Video, it's kind of like Netflix, but a little bit more. So we'll look at Huawei Music first. Huawei has already partnered with the biggest record labels in the world, including Universal Music, Warner Music, and Sony Music. So just about all the musicians that I listen to, such as classic rock like the Beatles, to 90s pop punk 
like Green Day to 2000s New York rock like The Strokes, they're all on here. Even a lot of the modern day stuff that I don't really listen to, but I know all the cool young people listen to, like Billie Eilish, Duh. is on here. And also this musician, XXX Tentacion. I, I don't even know how to pronounce his name. I don't know who he is, but I'm pretty sure his stuff is highly popular with young people today. Oh, and for K-pop fans, BTS is on here too. So the app interface is pretty simple. You have a giant album cover right here with controls down below and all the features that you'd expect from a music streaming platform like ability to stream high quality audio or download audio for offline play are all here. Now you do have to buy a subscription to use Huawei Music, but right now if you purchase a new Huawei phone, you will get three months free subscription to Huawei Music with no strings attached. Now let's look, let's look at Huawei Video. This is basically half Netflix, half free streaming services. So all the major Hollywood movies that I can think of are already on here, like Hustlers, Knives Out, Parasite. But Huawei is doing a little bit more. Huawei is not just focusing on the big name movies, internationally famous movies. Huawei is focusing on what it calls a global approach. That's half global, half local. So that means Huawei is covering the global end. All the big Hollywood movies are here. But also Huawei is focusing on the local market too. So here in Hong Kong, TVB is the biggest television network in Hong Kong. Everybody watches TVB. So Huawei has partnered with TVB. If I go to the TVB channel right here, I can stream TVB shows. And not just the new shows playing right now, but also the classics like this one, The Greed of Man. I actually grew up watching this as a kid and now I can stream it on my Huawei P40 Pro Plus anytime, anywhere. So Huawei is taking the same local approach with many other countries all around the world. So with Germany, Huawei is partnered with ZDF. They are the national broadcaster of Germany. And in Spain, Huawei is partnered with Rakuten TV and Filmin. They are both online streaming channels. And then with Russia, there's MiGoGo, H Plus in the Middle East. And obviously in China, every video streaming platform, every television network is going to be working with Huawei. So as I mentioned, there's a lot of free content on here. It's not just the professionally produced content like movies and TV shows, but there are a lot of these short online clips that have been curated by the partners in Huawei Video and uploaded for you to watch. So it's kind of like YouTube in a way too, but to watch newer movies, you do have to pay. So you can either pay a one-time fee or you can pay a monthly subscription fee and just watch unlimited content for that month. Next up, let's look at the Huawei browser. I've been using Huawei's browser and I kind of like it. So for example, there's a built-in ad blocker on here. So if you go onto a site that pops up a lot of those autoplay videos and pop-up ads, this will block it. And there's also a built-in QR code scanner. So in Hong Kong, we don't use QR codes to pay, but more and more restaurants are using QR codes to order. Like you sit down at restaurants, the menu will have a QR code and you simply scan and you can go directly to the menu and order. Now with many other phones, I have to download a specific QR code reader, but on Huawei browser, there's a QR code reader built into the browser. So it just requires me one tap, scan the QR code, and since I'm already in Huawei's browser, it'll immediately jump into that website the QR code's directing me to. So another useful feature of the Huawei browser is you can block images. Once you've turned that on, when you load a website, it will only load the text, no photos. So this is very useful for people with data plans that maybe they have a very low data plan or people living in countries with really slow internet. Finally, let's look at the app gallery. This is Huawei's app store, the main hub through which you will get all your apps. Now, according to Huawei, there are already 400 million users of the app gallery which makes it the third largest app store in the world. And app selections are growing by the day. So Huawei is also taking a global approach with the app gallery. That means Huawei, it's not just going after the biggest name brands, obviously, but Huawei is also working with local partners, local app developers in various different countries to, to promote content on its app gallery that's more catered to the local market. Just do a search online for Huawei app investment, and you see how Huawei is investing tens to hundreds millions of dollars into each different market. So we're talking Hong Kong, India, the UK, Turkey, Russia, South Africa. 
So you can expect a lot of localized content wherever you're at. So for me, I can see that all the major Hong Kong companies, including government utilities to banks, are, have already partnered with Huawei. The apps are already on the app gallery. Everything. All the banks, TV stations, uh, utilities. So if I need to pay for my internet bill, phone bill, it's already all on here. Now, there are some fun features of the app gallery. One of my favorites is Quick Apps, which allows me to run a, a web version of an app without needing to install that app first. So right now, most of the Quick Apps are games, but there are some useful utility apps such as Navy Time. Navy Time is an app that Japanese people use to map their commute. They're really easy to use and the app gallery even allows you to set a shortcut to quick apps on the home screen. So you just have to tap on that icon immediately jump into where all your quick apps are stored. Now speaking of mapping, Google Maps actually still work on this phone and any other Huawei phone without GMS but there is already a really good alternative in the app gallery. It's here maps by Wego Maps. Now they're not as famous as Google Maps but they are actually the second biggest map makers in the world right now. They've been around since 2012. If you are a user of Nokia phones and Blackberry phones, you might have heard of them. And the mapping system of Here Maps is really good. At least here in Hong Kong, it provides all the relevant information that I would need, including routing my commutes, like showing me the buses that I need to take or the train schedules and all that. And obviously Huawei is a major, major company, so they take privacy and security very seriously. So the app gallery has been certified safe and secure by several international security committees. Now, like I said, I've been using the Huawei P40 Pro with HMS only, and the experience has been pretty good. It hasn't been perfect. There are still some ways to go for HMS to get to as feature packed as what Google or Apple is offering. But if any company has the resources to get there, it would be Huawei. So that's about it for this video looking at Huawei mobile services. I'm going to have more content on the Huawei P40 Pro Plus coming very soon. So stay tuned if you're interested. Thanks for watching.